Well, guys, look, it's dark. Good morning from Mazatlan. It's uh, five after six, and my buddy Jim is morning, here, and we're going for a walk. And we're doing it this early because Jim's got to go back to Colorado today, unfortunately. And uh, we figure we'll walk downtown. I need something at the market, and, and maybe we'll see some Christmas lights lit up. Who knows? There, world headquarters locked up. Like I say, it's a little dark. But my street light's out here. I told the city about it a month ago, and nobody's ever come and done anything. Bloody hell. The last mayor, the street light went out. <clears throat> Three days later, it was fixed. I don't know what's going on here, why they can't come and fix a light. Do you keep your light on on your porch all night, do you? Or? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Especially with the street light out. Right. <clears throat> oh, good. They get the statue to the Bergen Guadalupe all lit up. That was a great video you put out uh, that, that night. That's fun that evening, you know. A lot of people come. And they have a good time. What day of the year is that? Uh, uh, December, December 12? 12, I think. Okay. And, and the party's on the, on the 11th. So it starts at like sundown the night before? Or? Yeah, basically. And then, and then it goes till just after midnight and then they call it a night. So that looks like it goes up to four or five different tiers. There's a bunch you know? of different levels and you, get, you go up to the top there, you get a really good view down North Beach. So is this, uh, is there a, a church up there or is it? No, just, it's, uh, it's just a statue. Just a statue? Yeah. Okay. And my neighbor, I don't know which house he lives in, I think it's that yellow one with the spiral stairs here. He maintains this. So it's just a park <coughs> open to the public? Yep. Or, okay. And they just, just before the, a couple weeks before the mm -hmm. celebration, they came and they painted it all up and make it look nice. And Oh, I don't know, I would guess two or three hundred people showed up to the party. Yeah, it was festive down through here for sure. That's wonderful to have that right here on your street. See, there's the shrine right there with the cross on the top. Right. But, uh, yeah, it's kind of neat. It's a fun night. I don't know how far I'd go to see it, but I mean, since I live on the street anyway, I just walk down and see who's here. Right. These guys get their houses done up nice. I didn't do anything like that this year because the girls aren't at the house anymore and it's, I, I didn't really care. So. Yeah. Suzanne has different decorations for kind of each holiday she'll put out. So at least we feel a little bit like we have some spirit. <laughs> yeah. Right. But yeah. boy, there are people that go overboard. Oh yeah. You know. Um it's funny, I I was looking at YouTube the other day and one of my old videos popped up. And it was a Christmas one. And uh and I I watched it, it came out of my playlist, and uh it was me saying Oh, Lapita heard a scratching at the front door. And so she went to see if it was one of the cats wanting in or whatever. She opened the inside door just in time to see a guy running down the street with a plastic cane she had Velcroed to the front door as a Christmas decoration. Oh, wow. <laughs> he stole it. <laughs> Bloody hell. <laughs> uh, well, guys, the sun's just coming up. Look at that. Perfect time of day to go for a walk. Today. Yeah, it, it really is. When you're when I'm by myself, it's hard to get motivated to get out so early. You know, it's like, what are you gonna do? And I I just soon sit home and drink coffee and watch YouTubers go make a YouTube. But since you called me this morning, I said, yeah, let's go. Well, we appreciate what you do, Julie. <clears throat> well, thank you. It uh, really helps you feel like you're. Here, 
when you're watching your video and it's snowing outside back in Colorado. <laughs> yeah. Well, Jim and his wife Suzanne and I went to uh, the Olympia yesterday for a, a couple, and Jim and Suzanne met Cynthia, my favorite little waitress over there. It was real nice. And we asked if she'd take a picture of us. And she says, oh, you want your picture with the muy famoso Dewey, the very famous Dewey. I laughed. Uh, Legendary Dewey. We go down through the hood or go down. I guess we went up that way the other day, didn't we? Yeah. <coughs> yeah. What's this? Is that just a house? It's a, no, it's a school. It's a, I think it's elementary and middle school. Okay. There's a lot of kids go there. All kinds of them. Mexican doorbell. This, this little house here, Jim, with the two lanterns. That's the one I was talking about the other day. You open that front door and look in. It's a great big patio, open top, yeah. swimming pool. It's beautiful. Wow. And, uh, and then the house is like probably 25 feet behind this wall. Yeah, it's kind of just a uh, misleading movie. You just it think it's doesn't look like anything. Like yeah. yeah. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. somewhere get a cup of coffee. Let's go down this way, down on the Malacan. Well, Dewey, it's just impressive. People out sweeping and cleaning up. And it's amazing, you know. They keep the streets clean with push carts and barrels and brooms, you know? Right. No big, powerful street sweepers. Or <clears throat> I get up this morning and went to the bathroom and stepped in a big puddle coming out from under my fridge. Oh, not again. So I got to get in touch with Lupita today so she can tell the fridge guys. I was going to send her a text this morning and I forgot. Was your freezer defrosting or something? Yeah. It, uh, there was a little fan in the in there that had quit. And, and that... That led to the freezer warming up and the and being very moist in there. And uh, there's an evaporator pan that the water was dripping down into and then subsequently leaking on the floor. So the guys got a new motor for me and put it in, and it worked great for about two months. And now I see water coming out of it again. But the freezer's still working fine. And uh, it's... It's not making any noises or anything, so I don't know what's happened. And it may be my fault. Because, even though I told him six times to get out of the house with it, Mouse had caught a mouse and brought him in the house. And he got away from him, and he got underneath the fridge. So Mouse is running behind the fridge. So I shoved the fridge tighter to the wall so he couldn't get in behind there. Maybe I screwed it up, I don't know. Maybe the <coughs> cooling fan is too close to the wall or something. Maybe so. That's what they do, they catch mice, birds, whatever, and then they bring them home to show you what they're doing their job. Another house there, all decorated up. Yeah. Beautiful architecture here, for sure. There's some really nice homes. 
And I think it's a strategy. They keep them low-key looking outside, right? But inside, they're beautiful. Yeah, there's one here, set back from the street. Right here, guys. Really nice. <clears throat> that big teak door. And this little bungalow with the nice front yard and the carport, that's been empty for, God, I'm going to say three or four years. A sin, really. It looks like a nice little house. I'd like to have that yard, I'll tell you. That's, that's kind of rare to have a, a front yard. Have a yard, yeah. Out. Uh, and I went to this street. building once. This is a notary public. I needed something witnessed. Beautiful offices. <clears throat> Apparently a notary public in Mexico is somewhat different than in Canada or the United States. A notary public has to be an attorney first. And then... The notary public designation is like another step above being an attorney. Oh, wow. I really thought of really highly here. Wow. And he, I found through a friend of mine who's a realtor here, she uses them, because you need to find one that's good enough in English that he's confident that he can read what he's witnessing. Right. So... Anyway, she recommended this guy, and he was great. Watch yourself here. So, a lot of these homes and little buildings we've been walking around, how old are they? What, what era were they? What I think a lot of this was probably built in there. 60s, but I don't know. My house was built in the 60s, I believe. Okay. That built this apartment building, for example, that kind of looks like something you know, like. Right. Might have been built in the 60s. But I don't know how old the oldest houses in this neighborhood are. This little house on the corner here, that's been empty for years. Let's go across and then we'll walk back towards town and, ooh, geez, down towards the park. La Plazuela Revolucion. Get a cup of coffee. Restaurant up here on this corner. Very popular. This little bar looks nice. I've never been in there. I should go one day. Check it out. This one? Yeah. I guess it's a restaurant more than a bistro grill. But yeah, this is the one I was saying. This this place right here on the corner. They set up tables and chairs underneath this roof. Man, it's popular. And then on the diagonally opposite corner, somebody comes with a cart, looks like he's got it there now. That's another place. Just swamp for breakfast. Okay. We can probably get a coffee in that also. If okay. you wanna if you wanna carry one or we'll get one down there. It's up to you. Yeah, let's get one down there rather than carry it. Well, I got, hard for you to carry with the camera. Well yeah, with two hands busy. <laughs> the best time of day, do we? Yeah, it really is. I like getting up early. And... I always get up early, and uh, I enjoy sitting there, and the street's quiet. 
Nobody coming around bothering me. <laughs> like I was telling you the other day, I'm sitting in front of my front door and a neighbor that I hardly ever really speak to, I don't know him that well, he lives three or four doors down, makes a point of coming over to tell me I shouldn't be smoking. Oh, Jesus. Don't mind your own fucking business. Like, jeez. Sitting in my own house, my own living room, and catching shit for a neighbor. Oh, God. I turned into a grumpy old man, Jim. <laughs> <coughs> Hey guys, if you're watching, it's kind of quiet right now. This would be a good time to reach out and touch the like button. You know, that's the button that stupid people never push. <laughs> I try to remember to hit the like button, Dewey, but I have to admit, there's probably, sometimes I forget. All it does is it helps me. It doesn't cost anybody anything to hit the like button. Sure. And, uh... The more likes I get, then the more times YouTube shows the video to people. If you share it, that helps also, right? Yeah. Yeah. And subscribe. Yeah. Well, subscribing is the name of the game, you know. Some of these guys, a channel I really enjoy called Bald and Bankrupt, you got like 3 million subscribers. The guy's a YouTube millionaire. He must be making bags of money off that channel. Where did all this sand come from? That's the second dentist we've walked by. Is this kind of a dental? I go to this dental? guy. He's he's good. He's uh, very good in English, and his wife is. Either a dentist or a dental hygienist, she works with them. Isn't that a pretty Christmas tree? Sure is. That. Flower shop. Yeah. There's quite a few florists in this neighborhood. Only two or three dentists that I know of. Is there a lot of uh, medical or dental tourism where people come down? I'm sure there is. On it's so much cheaper down here. Like, I, I needed implants, and the dentist in Canada quoted me 24000 Canadian dollars. Wow. And I said, oh, screw that. I'm going to Mexico. I'll check it out down there. So the next day, the Canadian dentist phoned me at the house, and he says, oh, I can give you a better price, uh, 18000 I said, no thanks. Came down here, got... That work done, plus more, for less than 6,000 Canadian. Wow. <clears throat> and you felt quality-wise was just as good? Yeah, well, it's funny, I, I... Or better, maybe. I had a friend that I'd met in Houston, and uh, through motorcycle travels, and I stopped in Houston on the way down here to visit him. It turns out his buddy is a dental surgeon, retired, but I asked him about that because I was on my way down to get the work done. And he said, oh, he said, you know, don't go to some run-down little fly-by-night dental clinic, but if you go to any kind of reputable-looking clinic, those guys go to the same schools we do. We go to the same conferences together. He said, I have every confidence in them. So that made me feel better. And that was a, a dentist from Houston. Yeah, a dental surgeon from Houston. Mm -hmm. There's beautiful Zaragoza Square. Looks like they're setting up or tearing down some tables. Uh, today, <laughs> this is Saturday, isn't it? Organic market later this morning. Okay. We gotta hike over the hill, but then we're at the cathedral.
I'm thinking it's better if we go over on this side. It's on top of this big wall here. There's a school. Um, no, it's not a school. It's uh, got something to do with the Department of Health. Okay. Clinics and stuff. It's a good time to start the camera again. There. These bloody cameras time out after 29 minutes and 59 seconds. And it's an EU rule, if you can imagine. That's interesting. So you have to remember to turn it back on. Yeah, and if you, the thing is, if you're down, say, on the Malacan on a busy day, lots of traffic, and it shuts off, it beeps, but you might not hear it, right? Right. <clears throat> so you kind of have to keep your eye on it. <clears throat> oh, Cynthia had a cold last week, and I, uh, I feel like I'm getting one this week. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what happens when you kiss all the girls when you go in the bar. We're going to stop doing that, do we? Yeah. And there's the cathedral. Like, look at these little homes. If you had one of them, you could make it so nice. Should get out of the middle of the road, I suppose. I hear some roosters down there. This little street's a dead end, so. That's cool. That'd be a great see. place to live, yeah. yeah. Las mil piñatas, a thousand piñatas. Uy. Piñata store. Yeah, that's all they do, piñatas. I've never seen a bus take that route before. I don't know where he's going. I gotta try this bakery one day too. They say it's really good and it's fairly new. Artisanos. I find the Mexican bread very sweet. They use an awful lot of sugar. There's a bake, Chinese car, Sonoba. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, I've never seen one of those. Before. I don't think they sell them in the U.S. or Canada. It's called Bake? Bake, B-A-I-C. They got one that looks so much like a Jeep Wrangler, unless you're sort of a, a, a Jeep aficionado, you'd swear it was a Jeep. It's such a blatant copy, it's unbelievable. Right. And I was looking at one one day, and I said, oh, gee, I don't remember seeing a Jeep with taillights quite like that before. I got looking at it, and I realized, it's not a Jeep. A bake. 
Yeah. Look at that house at the end doing. Oh the, yeah, he's got lots of decoration and all that on top of the. Let's go see. Roof. Oh now, wow! Those towers on Icebox Hill are those all radio towers or marine? I've often wondered. Or do you want? I've often wondered that. I don't know. Huh. There, I know there's a radio station up there, and we get a really clear signal on the TV for six or seven channels, so they got to be TV transmitters. Right. But every Mexican town seems to have them. There's always a hill somewhere in town, and they're always covered in antennas. Buenos dias. Yeah, they really got this house done out there. Santa Claus up on the roof. On the roof. Uh, roof dogs. Oh, on the roof. Yeah. That's cool. Boy, that house probably has to win the award. Let me get a picture of that. It's really quite nice. Right next to Sammy's Barbershop. Yeah, and Sammy's, as far as I know, it's closed. We we'll get down in front of the city hall and get a picture of the big Mazatlan sign while it's lit up. Yeah, let's go down here, Jim. This business here, Renta de Trajes, he, uh, he rents out uh, tuxedos and stuff. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I'll well, try. I should go rent one one day, just for the hell of it. And walk around. Walk around, around town, around. yeah, and see what happens. What color tuxedo would you get, Dewey? Uh, I think I'd get, I like the off-white ones. Yeah. Like a cream-colored one. Right. Very tropical. Yes, definitely. <coughs> oh, here comes the car. Reminds me of playing street hockey when I was a kid. Car! Yeah. Tell me you're Canadian without <laughs> saying you're Canadian. Yeah, I remember when I was playing street hockey when I was a kid. Popular. Yeah. Skating and street hockey and... I have seen the occasional hockey game on TV down here, like in some of the sports bars and stuff, but I've never seen it on Mexican TV. Not a thing. No. It's all lit up down here. Ah, the square is beautiful today. That's it, man. <laughs> street leaf blower going. I came down here one morning, last year I think it was, to film the Christmas lights, 5 a.m. Freaking leaf blower blowing in the middle of the... <laughs> God. Yeah. I have a lot of sounds uh, here yeah. throughout the night and any time of day. Noise is a big thing down here. There we go, guys. Look at the Mazatlan sign, all lit up nice.
Christmas tree. Santa's cottage. It's really quite nice. They do a lot of effort, you know, to... Oh, this is great. This yeah, is... it's beautifully decorated. Feliz Navidad. Nativity scene. Beautiful. Do me a favor, Jim, just hold this. You don't have to do anything with it, really. I just want to use my phone to make a, a short 15-second video. All right. They're very popular on YouTube nowadays, and uh, I get one in front of the sign in the cathedral. Hard keeping it clean down here. There's the star of the show. Dewey, you're starring in your own video this morning here. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I got a camera crew, finally. Please, just black for me. Just black coffee? Okay. No, no, water. No water. Oh. Water for the coffee. Gracias, amigo. Okay. You don't have any water. Okay. No problem. Gracias. I wonder why that is. Oh, it's nice, Jim. Now I can have a smoke. Chill. You got it. That's 
kind of fun using that thing. It's got a mind of its own, kind of, with you, the well, the twist, way it balances. If you twist your wrist, that'll make the camera turn left and right. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Especially if you're holding it quite vertical. Right. Just turn your wrist and see what happens. See? It'll got it. Okay. And then uh, after that, it's straight really forward. This must have cost a pretty penny, this little. Yeah, they're expensive. They're, oh, I'm going to say $300, $350. And then the camera itself is about 500 US. Makes what? good quality video, Stewie. Oh, it's a great camera. I really like it. And it's Steve's. Nikon's making a new little camera, a ZFC is the model number. If I had bags of money, I'd get one of them. But, uh, yeah, it's around a thousand dollars, I guess. And, uh, and then Fujifilm makes an ex another one, an X-T30, and it's a compact little, but they're such a nice little camera. I'd still use this for video. But I'd like to have them for doing photos. For doing what? Just taking photos. Oh, photos, right. New italic. Today I gotta, oh, my cupboard's bare at home, I gotta get to a few groceries. But what I need is a, a bottle of instant coffee. So when I go on a walk like this, it's just easy to make a couple cups of coffee and put it in my thermos. Right. And uh, it's nice and hot. And I make it in the coffee machine. It's not, it's not as warm, it's just doing it boiling hot instant. Makes it nice for a walk yeah. that way. We got the Machado flies all lit up, so check that out. Some enterprising soul should have a coffee shop that's open at 6 a.m. on the plaza. There's one here, but he doesn't open until about nine. One more block over, there's another store. I think they have coffee, but they don't open until about nine. And there's a coffee shop on the corner too, and he opens late. I remember one video, oh, a couple months ago, you were walking early. And the first OXO you went to was closed, and you went to a second one, and yeah. it was open. Yeah. Do they normally open around the same time, or they're 5 or 5.30? Or? They're all open all night, but what they do is, I don't know what time at night, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, they lock the front doors. And there's a little, like a teller's window there. And you tell them what you want, and they'll bring it to you. But they won't let you in the store. Gotcha. Uh, prevents robberies, I guess. Right. And, uh... Uh, so, this? I think I went to three that morning before I could find one with coffee. Uh, 
Ah, that's very nice. All this talk about coffee, now I really want it. <laughs> I had one at the house, but that was 4 or 5 a.m. There's a lot of nice squares and plazas. Yeah, this is a beautiful square. This has been here since 1860. I'll get that big picture on the wall of my house from 1933. There was nothing. <laughs> Just nothing. Icebox Hill is empty. One house on it. Uh, and they had a big storm here. I forget, I forget the name of it. But as recently as like the 1960s. And there was only 10,000 people in Mexico. But it was a really bad hurricane and, and killed a lot of people. T uh, left 6,000 people homeless. Over the last couple of years, <coughs> I've watched the hurricanes that have kind of came up this way. They don't seem devastating. We've Just a really lot of rain. Lucky. Like really lucky. Like these class fives come right up to the city and seem to just dissipate, or the last two anyway. Lots of rain, but no real damaging wind, no nothing. And if they go inland, either north or south of us, as soon as they hit the mountains, they're done. The mountains just rip them up. This magnolia tree, beautiful. Little hummingbird up there, just about the middle of the tree. Mm -hmm. Oh, I saw it move. Hand side of the screen, what's the time say in there, Jim? 22.47. Okay, so we've got a few minutes. Well, tomorrow morning, we'll be back in... Beautiful Colorado. Colorado and... Shivering. <laughs> yeah. I've been through Colorado once, and it was in April, and I was on the motorcycle headed back to New Brunswick from here. And I'd gone up to see the Grand Canyon, the Four Corners. Oh, nice. Uh, Monument Valley. Right. Oh, it was just a spectacular ride. But I crossed the pass out of Colorado into Kansas, is that right? Well... Is my geography right? Or uh, there's... It's completely flat at the Kansas-Colorado border. Yeah, when you finally he, come down... But, and I was cold. I was up there and there were snow banks. Oh, six feet high. <laughs> the road was bare, but I had an electric jacket. A vest. Heated? Yeah, heated vest. So I was okay. And I had heated grips, so my hands were okay. But I'm so glad to get down out of the mountains, I'll tell you. <laughs> when I was riding in South America, I, I uh, crossed the Andes twice. I think one pass was 15.6, and the other one was 16.1.
might be thin air up there at that time. You're talking feet? Yep. Wow. And that is up there. At one time, or at that time, I had a naturally aspirated motorcycle, KLR, Kawasaki KLR650. Not fuel injected, it had a carburetor. <laughs> she was making about five horsepower up the top of the pass. And I was making a whole lot less. Oh, jeez. Everything you do is just a struggle because there's no air. That's pretty high. And a buddy of mine came through a month later on my recommendation. He and I had been together up in northern South America. And then his wife flew into Ecuador and they went out to the Galapagos Islands. And uh, so he was about a month behind me. And uh, I told him to take this pass. I said, the road's beautiful. And it was. <laughs> He said, God, I get up the top there, I almost died. He said, because I stopped, I wanted to take a feed, so, because there's an occasional car, he ran down over the hill off the road, and it's built up about 20 feet. <laughs> he said, when when it is, he said, uh, climbing back up that 20 feet, he said, that's one of the hardest things I ever did. <laughs> Worried he couldn't even get back to the road. Couldn't huh? even breathe. <laughs> yeah. That's a nice little park to sit in. And when the Malacons like crazy busy, you know, you come down here and sit at the far end of this park. There's nobody. It's quiet. Yeah, Suzanne and I last time sat out there for a while, and that's a museum. Yeah, art gallery uh, and museum here. Right. What did they call that little plaza, or it, I, does it have a name? I don't know if it has a name. Yeah. What name? Menestius. It's amazing down here, Dewey, how nine out of ten people pretty much greet you, no matter what time of day. Yeah. And back home, maybe one out of ten, if you're walking down the sidewalk, will even acknowledge you and say anything. It is funny. You know. They might if you speak to them first, but it's a more socially kind community, in my opinion. Yeah, it's all about family here in Northern And, you know, I lived in Toronto for a while, I lived and worked in Toronto, and I lived in a big high rise. It was, I think, 220 apartments in the building. And I lived on the top floor. And I'd get on the elevator and go up, and nobody would even speak to you, you know, ever. Right. Except for one guy. And it turned out he was a pilot for WestJet, and he was from Newfoundland. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Another East Coaster, yeah. Gotcha. Well, yeah, different parts of the world, it's different. I, I forget how we get talking. I think I noticed his WestJet shirt. And I said, oh, WestJet. And he said, I said, what do you do for them? And he told me he was a 737 captain. And I said, oh, I'm one of the controllers over here. Nice to meet you, you know, we're buddies then. Something in common. <laughs> yeah. These chaleos isn't even open yet. What time is it? Five to seven. I walked up to Molly Con this morning up to your place. It was dark, but the lights were on, obviously, and there was only a couple people I passed. Now there's quite a few people out. Yeah, a lot of people, especially in the summertime, really busy already in the morning because it's light so early, but it gets hot so fast, right? Right. So everybody comes down here at 5 a.m., 6 a.m. Well, Dewey, we're getting down to about 
24 seconds left. Okay, I'll do a little sign off. That's going to be it for now, guys. We're going in this auction up here to get a cup of coffee. Thanks oh. for having me along, Dewey. Hey, thanks for coming, Jim. A see pleasure. See you next time. We'll see you on the, we'll on see the, you on the boob, too. On the return visit. See you, guys. Bye for now.